Hello everybody, welcome back to the Pokey Pyramid Tournament Shoutcasting. And today we're, uh, where we left off, we had covered these here semi-final matches. Uh, against, between Colin and myself and Clover and Adrian. Uh, today we are going to be covering my fight with Clover. As well as these, lo this loser's bracket matchup and this loser's bracket matchup. So... The thing of it is, I know I have not covered any of these five games. Uh, I have all the games for this, I have all the games for this, and I have one of the games for this fight. I didn't, I think, I f if I was going to do a video, my plan was I was going to do these two, and then this match as one video, and then these five as another. But if I only have two of them and then half of another, I don't really want to piece that together. So we're just going to skip over most of the losers bracket, skipping straight to uh, losers semifinals, uh, where whoever wins this will. Gandhi actually, uh, Gandhi's made a huge redemption run. Both of them got knocked out uh, near the beginning of the losers bracket, and have made a mad dash for the top, um, and are fighting one another in this battle. Uh, and so, we're just going to start off with my battle with Clover. Um, I'm playing Electric. Oh, I like showing my teams in this one, so I'll pull that up real quick. Uh, I was up against Psychic this go-around, so I've been up against Dark, Steel, and now Psychic. And um, so this was the team I ended up bringing. I was using a Agility Ampharos. Uh... No particular reason. I liked Dragon Pulse because I had scouted that he ran a lot of uh, Latias and Latias, so I was hoping with an agility I could catch them. And uh, Signal Beam is my best coverage for a lot of these Pokemon. It was just a fun call. Um, Charlotte the Galvantula running standard moveset, um, but instead of a Focus Sash or something like that, we are running Beginium Z to try and hit something with a Z Bug Buzz. Uh, which I thought was a nice tech. Uh, I pulled out the Choice Band Zara Aura again because I got to hit that Choice Band knockoff, and that was pretty big. Uh, this time I decided to bring Assault Vest to Zapdos. I thought it, uh, Psychic runs almost all special attackers, and Zapdos's Bidef is decent, its HP is good, and it ha got enough coverage, plus it has Signal Beam and then Heat Wave for, like, Steel Psychics. Um... I thought it was an interesting call. Rotom Wash, just a good throw on. I, I threw Dark Pulse on it as a sort of uh, hit the Psychics. And then finally, a Salic Berry Subtail Glow Zerkatry. Now, this thing is a monster, and it is pretty well known for stealing games out of nowhere. So, uh, I was very happy with this team. It also gets Signal Beam, which is one of the reasons I brought it. Uh... So we will, we gotta be on our own side, god. And we'll jump right into it. Uh, so they end up leading Claydol, I led Ampharos. Uh, I don't know, I was thinking I might be able to catch him uh, and pick up the agility on maybe like Stealth Rocks. Uh, which does actually end up happening, so I get my Ampharos nice and speedy. Uh, and it does pretty good damage to the Claydol. I kind of severely overestimated the damage output of an Ampharos. Um, it, it's, uh, he brings in Metacham here, which I believe, uh, yes, outspeeds because it is a choice scarfed Metacham here. Uh, I end up going Zerkatry, figuring if Scarf, I should be able to um, take a hit and Tail Glow. Which was risky. I was thinking it would knock me into Salic Berry range. Kind of a, a clunky play, but he ended up switching out, uh, probably scared off because Ice Punch wouldn't deal too much. Uh, so I end up subbing, uh, and then subbing. Uh, breaks it with an Earth Power, and I sub one more time here. Uh, and I get the Salic Berry boost, which lets me get off a Signal Beam that easily kills. Now we're at plus four and plus one, and uh, Latias, com Latias comes in, Signal Beam kills. 
uh, get the boost. Metacham comes in and gets out sped because Zerkatry is max speed. Uh, well, it's, yes, max speed with a speed boosting nature, I think. Uh, and after this, it is just a slaughter. Um, it was a risky tail glow. I don't know. I thought it was worth a shot. I, honestly, in hindsight, it was a bad call to tail glow, but I was not fully in the headspace yet, and, you know, it ended up winning me the game. So, uh, <laughs> I can't really complain now, can I? Uh, so that's my game one. Going into game two. I'm just gonna put it on normal speed. I ended up bleeding Galvantula. Uh, try and getting that sticky webs down to kind of put a hamper. Notably, this is a curse Slowbro, I believe, because it's running, yeah, Earthquake. Which does decent enough damage to Charlotte. Uh, they bring in Metacham here, which does not eat a Thunder well at all, and does get outsped because of the, that sticky web, uh, and Charlotte's very fast. I end up firing off a Savage spin out for a good chunk of damage on the Hatterene, uh, and then I bring in Zerkatry, <laughs> and Substitute, and he Aromatherapies to cure the Paralysis, so I Tail Glow. <laughs> Giga Drain breaks my sub. I believe I sub two more times here to get my Salic Berry. Yup. Um, and then one more sub, which is the Salic Berry is why I don't have odd health. Normally I'd like to be able to get four subs off, but I want to get into Salic Berry range. And yeah, with webs up, uh, if this was Quick Draw, it could have been a problem because he might have gotten off the Quick Draw and hit me. Uh, if you had Bullet Punch on Metagross, it probably kills, right? I'm honestly not sure. I don't think he was running Bullet Punch for whatever reason. Um, I, I, it, I think it might have been a choiced Metagross, but still. Uh, and yeah, I won two games with Circuitry Sweeps. Not the most honorable way to go to finals, but, you know, we don't complain. Um, uh, so, this is, we got Gonzalo and Gandhi, they are going to face off to get the ability to face off against, uh, Clover in the next match. Uh, as you can see, Gandhi's on water, and Gonzalo is on steel. Uh, my first notice was bringing Mantine and Golduck was a little odd here, but, uh, you know... I, I don't I don't know what's going through their heads. Uh, on this side, I liked he switched out some some ons for a Magnazone and a Ferrothorn, uh, which seem reasonable enough. So we're gonna jump right into it. I oh I also really like the Volk play. Uh, it's a good mon to bring here. Fire Blast healing a huge chunk. Uh, I'll just say this now: this is a scarfed Vulcanian. Um, Switches out here, I assume, anticipating a Protect, which is correct. Uh, we see another Protect here. Very risky, because I do believe that was 50% uh, to try and scout. Flip turns out back to the Vulcanian, who eats the Giga Drain fairly well. A little odd play going on so far. Protects, scouts the Fire Blast. I assume we're going to see a... Well, no, you don't really have a Fire Switch, do you? Um, Celesteela goes down here. Uh, Magnazone scares in Swampert, who eats a Toxic. Going hard Swampert on a zone is a little risky. We see the double to Toad, uh, which does get the rain up. Ega Slash has Solar Blade, um, which is kind of completely nullified by the fact that Politoed is packing Protect. Uh, also, Whirlpool, Politoed. Does... Whirlpool is a trapping. Can Ghost just switch out of all trapping moves? That's weird. Okay. Skull does 43 on the Rachi switch, and then he protects on the Z happy hour. And I, I was in voice call when this happened. I winced. Switches out the Toad into the Mantine, which just dies, obviously. Um... Toad comes back in. I'm not sure what for. Uh, it eats a Psychic fairly well. I don't know why we didn't see a Thunderbolt there. Burn deals uh, get, deals good damage and a burn. 
Scald deals good damage in a burn, pardon me. Thunderbolt is going to take out the Toad. Probably we're supposed to protect there to get a little bit more burn damage off. Um, Swampert comes in. If I recall, it eats the Psychic, yes. Uh, because it is outsped, even with Swift Swim, in the rain by a plus one Jirachi. Um, Swampert takes a little bit more damage. Uh, Ega Slash comes in, staring down a Swift Swimming Swampert. Uh, say that three t five times fast. Protects on the uh, Earthquake, whittling down Swampert. Then goes Ferrothorn, who eats Earthquake fairly well. Oof, 51 on a crit. Unfortunate. Uh, Swampert does go down here. Do we see... Uh, we see Golduck. I would have gone anything but Golduck. But it does have Hidden Power Fire, but it doesn't even kill. Uh, and then a crit Giga Drain. Running Giga Drain on Ferrothorn over Power Whip is a decision you can make. Um... <laughs> Ferrothorn goes down. I don't think it's a good decision, to be clear. Uh, Hidden Power Fire Golduck does not deal a lot of damage. Magnezone comes in. I think that, yeah, that reveals that it's Scarf. Um, Scarf Toxic? I'm pretty sure it is Scarf, though. Uh, Volk comes in. King Shield goes up. Kind of stalling out those Fire Blasts. There's only eight of them. Uh, and s with a little luck, you can actually burn through a lot of them. And we do see that happening. Uh, Magnezone comes in. Fire Blast misses. Now you're down to two Fire Blasts. Uh, one of them hits. That's nice. But you've only got one left. And Ego Slash does have King Shield. We do see the switch to Polyrath here. Uh, protecting on the Polyrath, I assume trying to bait a contact move to give it that attack drop. So many back-to-back -back King Shields, and they're all happening. Okay, uh, that one finally fails, and Earthquake will kill the Aegislash, Slash, and Scarf Vulcanion plus Polyrath handles a Metagross. Um, if it was Weakness Policy Agility... I think we see a, a game steal there, right? Oh, was it at speed? If it's max speed, it was speed tied with Polyrath. Uh, steam Eruption there, good call so that you don't risk missing Fire Blast. Steam Eruption is 10% more accurate. Which is actually 67% more accurate. Well, no, I'd have to do the math. Never mind. Uh, and Gandhi ends up taking game one. Game two, we'll we'll switch sides for game two. We'll just jump right into this. We see the Magnazone lead into the Politoed. Uh, immediate double into Swampert. Good Toxic. I'm pretty sure this is Scarf Zone, which means it does have to switch out there. And then bulk up Swampert, which really caught me off guard when this game was happening. Flip turn only dealing 60 in the rain at plus one is a little unfortunate. Cloud nine here, notably so that your fire moves are not reduced in power. Um, but it doesn't stick, which I was not aware of. I thought cloud nine cleared the weather. Um, which is why we see that sort of odd switching there. Golduck comes back in. Celesteela protects on the calm mind. Good calm mind there. Uh, almost at 100% and at plus one. Pharaoh comes in, does not take Hidden Power Fire nicely. Um, honestly, you probably could have calm minded there. He revealed Giga Drain, that's probably his attacking move. Uh, Solar Blade goes up and you take 91 from uh, HP Fire. Mantine switches in on the Solar Blade very safely. Uh, Selly comes in Mantine misses an air slash unfortunate Giga not dealing really anything there I think you were supposed to uh, leech seed seeds go up on the Volk we see a protect once again stalling damage and fire blast PP which is relevant you only get eight 
Fire Blast does so much damage when it hits, though. And Volk is taking a lot of drain here from the Sally. Uh, switching on a predicted Protect, I assume, but instead we see another Giga. Aggressive plays by Gonzalo. Being rewarded, Calm Mind goes up on a Leech Seed. Do we see another Calm Mind on a predicted Protect here, though? We do, which we don't actually see a Protect. We see a pretty soft Giga, um, which leaves Golduck pretty low HP. And a third Calm Mind now on the Protect, which is fortunate for Gandhi here. I assume a Hidden Power Fire is going off, and it hits Metagross for solid 73. And Metagross reveals it does have Bullet Punch. Oh wait, that was last game where I was thinking about Bullet Punch, that was my match. Uh, Golduck ends up taking out Metagross, but Shadow Sneak is going to kill it in response. I thought this was... I might have my games out of order. Um, I am now noticing... Uh, Scald deals 55 to the zone, uh, and then kills it with the follow-up. So every day you see Politoed just 1v1-ing a f uh, goddamn uh, dyslexic, apparently, uh, Magnuson. Swamper comes in. It is weakened, and we see uh, Psychic's going to deal a lot, and Earthquake is not going to kill in return. Uh, very, very relevant here. Swampert goes down to the follow-up Psychic. Mantine comes in, does not eat a Thunderbolt. Polly Toad setting up the rain. Oh yeah, Polyrath does get Swift Swim, but it's not going to outspeed. Uh, as we saw, Swampert did not. And they're actually the same speed. Uh, Polly Toad goes down, Polyrath trying to make take advantage of the rain, but it's not fast enough. And Volcanion is very, very chipped, which means it dies. And so, out of nowhere, a Z, uh, a Z Happy Hour Jirachi is able to counter sweep and take game two for Gonzalo, meaning this game three is for all the marbles. Let's jump right into it. We see a Ferrothorn lead into a Volk lead, and he just sacks off the Ferrothorn. Great start for Gandhi. Uh, Metagross comes in. I'm a little surprised you didn't just Fire Blast again, I mean, it, it wouldn't have killed. I guess that's fair. Thunder Punch kills the Mantine. Swamper gets up a bulk up. I need to slow this down. But then immediately flip turns, which, you know, there goes the bulk up. Leech Seed goes up on the Volk. I think Fire Blast is dealing 84? Yep, yeah, so it kills. I'm surprised you didn't see a Protect there. Um, maybe predicting a Switch. Uh, brings in Swampert on a Thunderbolt. Great maneuvering for Gandhi here. He's in a really good position. Uh, that might have been a speed tie. It's possible. We don't really know. Earthquake is going to kill the Metagross. And we just see it press Psychic here. The Rachi. Um, Rachi was supposed to Z Happy Hour there, right? Because I think at plus one defense it takes an Earthquake. I guess it's not. It doesn't really matter. It's not killing with Psychic on the following turn. Tries to set up Solar Blade with Ega Slash. Dies. Magnazone comes in. Hits a soft crit. And dies because it's actually not sturdy. I guess it's analytic? I don't know why you wouldn't be sturdy. Uh, and that's game three. Gandhi is going to go to Losers Finals to face off against Clover. Um... And brings a interesting team. I actually really like it. The only two that are consistent with last game, Politoed and Swampert. We also have a Crawdont, an Araquanid, a Jellicent, and a... Uh, the only one I remember exactly what it was, a Shell Smash, Gorbis. And our Psychic team here, which I didn't talk a lot about in my game because it kind of died. Uh, we have an Espeon, a Mr. Mime, which is going to have a little bit of fun in this match. Uh, the Metacham is back. Hatterene, uh, Sigalith, and Latios, uh, instead of Latios, which was what he used against me in our match. Latios leads against a Jellicent. Energy Ball only does 46, and the follow-up Shadow Ball does 53, which puts Jellicent in a position to kill the Latios. Um, we see another Shadow Ball comes in for a solid 61 on Hatterene, and the follow-up kills. 
This Jellicent is like max special attack or something. It's just monstrous damage. Uh, Metacham comes in and just thunder punches it on its fairly weak physical defense. Araquanid comes in, eats the thunder punch fairly well. Um, we see Swampert come in on another yet another thunder punch. So webs are up, which is great for Gandhi. Uh, I will say I was kind of cheering for Gandhi because I think water is more manageable than a venge uh, vengeful psychic trying to take me down. Um, Flip turns out for, with huge damage. Gorbis comes in, takes a lot from the freeze dry, uh, and then shadow balls for the kill. Could it just shell smashed there? I don't think there's any priority other than maybe on Metacham. Maybe like bullet punch. Uh, Araquanid comes in and eats that energy ball just barely, but it's gonna die to the follow up, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I think we see, yeah, the toad comes in here. Uh, Rain goes up, eats energy ball le worse than I would expect it to, you know? Uh, gets off toxic. But Rain is now up for Swampert. I think that's... Oh, and Gorbis, who I'm assuming is Swift Swim. Uh, Swimft. Swim. Uh, protects on the energy ball for some toxic damage. And is going to go up to the follow-up energy ball. But now you get to bring in Swampert with two turns of Rain. So you can finish off Latios. Just make sure not to use Flip Turn. Uh, we see Darkest Lariat is the move cho chosen, because, you know, Dark beats Psychic. It's not the most complicated of things. Sigalyph is going to come in, and we see a flip turn when I, I think Darkest Lariat just kills there. Uh, and Energy Ball kills Crawdont. And then Rain goes down. I don't know why he didn't just press... Um, Darkest Lariat. No idea. Energy Ball kills, and Gorbis is at 11%, and outsped. So, Energy Ball kills. I think you could have Shell Smashed with the Gorbis. I think Darkest Lariat kills. Um, Hatterene was definitely thrown away here. A lot was thrown away at this Jellicent. <sighs> that would- that shouldn't- that should not happen, but, uh, yeah, Sigalift steal, steals game one there. Uh, and so- Gandhi down a game going into game two in the losers finals. But this is life or death. Uh, Gorbis is the lead. Mr. Mime uses hail because it's ice body hail, which gives Gorbis a free turn to set up set up bleh, set up shell smash. Although hail will break focus sash for what it's worth. Uh, Shadow ball kills. Uh, if I recall, this this game is kind of funny. Hatterene dies to a Shadow Ball very cleanly. This Hatterene is, has underwhelmed for sure. Um, Sigalyph dies. I think Clover was kind of like, oh, well, I'm dead. And just kind of throwing members away at this point. Uh, Espeon really does nothing in this entire match. It's sad. Uh, Megalodios dies. And then, I'll put it on. Well, no. I'm just gonna skip some. No, wait, wait, wait. Okay, sorry. Normal speed. <laughs> I was just being impatient. Uh, we see Metacham comes in, who's Choice Scarf, and outspeeds and kills with a Thunder Punch. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, Clover threw away most of her team. Uh, and so Espeon comes in on a bulk up, because obviously that bulk up was free in the face of a Thunder Punch. Switches to Crawdon to just dies to a Grass Knot. I forgot about this, this end game. I, Espeon might do more than I thought. Leech Life coming out here for a solid 43. Uh, Politoed, I assume, yeah, sacking off to the Thunder Punch. Uh, only takes 63 there, or some, 67 maybe? I wasn't. Uh, Araquanid, I think it was actually 63, Araquanid comes in, hits another Leech Life, and, uh, really just whittling down this Met Metacham is the name of the game, sacking what you need, uh, not taking, leaving anything to chance here, 
Uh, Swampert comes in, but Rain does go down. S Thunder punches to sack off. He could have bulked up there, which could have been scary. Uh, Espeon, I don't think, can win this game on its own, especially with this Araquanid on the back. We see uh, Politoed comes in for the sack, and Swampert, yeah, uh, Rain, Darkest Lariat. You also could have just Araquanid it, but uh, that's going to be game two for Gandhi. Which means, uh, and Gandhi, of course, is an LGL rep, so obviously I was cheering for Gandhi. Um, notably, there was three people in this tournament that have been in the LGL before. Myself, uh, Gandhi, and CEO of Cheese World, who has been, who is a temporary coach at one point and has been in a tournament or two. Um, and uh, CEO of Cheese World ended up getting knocked out a little while ago. Um, I believe he he knocked Gandhi to losers, uh, and then lost to Clover, and then lost to Gonzalo from earlier. Uh, but this is the last game of losers bracket. It all comes down to this. Uh, we see Crawdont leading off, who has done a very disappointing amount of work. Hatterene gets off a trick room, Giga Drain dealing a solid 50, and then the magic bounce. So... Terrible, horrible start for Gandhi here. Uh, protects to, I guess, take more toxic damage? Uh, I mean, it stalls Trick Room. There's obviously value to it. Uh, Araquanid comes in on a Giga Drain here. And we see the Nuzzle come out of the Hatterene. Uh, but Liquidation does a solid 92 because of Water Bubble, bubble plus Rain. Uh... And then the follow-up liquidation kills with Giga Drain dealing a decent chunk. Mr. Mime is very weak, so it doesn't quite pick up the kill, but uh, it's the follow-up freeze-dry does after being paralyzed. And Politoed comes in, sets up the rain, but Mr. Mime is able to set up the hail, which is why I thought he ran hail on Mr. Mime, but he told me after it was to set up Ice Body. And then Crawdont dies because Crawdont is wasted in this match. <laughs> Uh, Jellicent is gonna come in here and eat that grass not like it's nothing, and set up a trick room of his own. Uh, at this point, Jellicent's kind of the slowest Pokemon of all of them. Uh, Jellicent, Jellicent eats. Does this Jellicent have Recover? Because honestly, it could just win this game with Recover, but instead it's quite low. Um, we see Sigalyph comes in. And gets outsped and eats 74 from a Shadow Ball. Uh, Energy Ball is going to kill, but it's tr still in Trick Room. So Flip Turn gets to take out the Sigalyph. And we see Toad is going to come in to set up the rain. This is kind of anyone's game here. Um, uh, Latios is going to come in and finish off the Toad. But Gorbis is really is threatening a sweep. It's going to Shell Smash here. Uh, and then get knocked to its sash by an energy ball. Uh, Shadow Ball does take out the Latios here. Um, but I, but then we, we have to see Espeon come in because of Swift Swim. It would outspeed Scarf Metacham. While Espeon never can. So Metacham had to wait. Which makes it a 1v1. Okay, here, here's the thing. Zen Headbutt hits. Earthquake does 96%. So, Swampert, if you see, does not die to Zen Headbutt, but if this turn it got flinched, or the last turn it got flinched, or Zen Headbutt crits this turn, or actually either turn, or if Zen Headbutt crits, uh, obviously if Zen Headbutt misses, then Swampert automatically wins without like two flinches. And then Zen Headbutt doesn't flinch your crit, and Swampert kills the Metacham. There was a, like, almost a 50-50 chance of Clover getting one of the two flinches or um, a crit. But there was also the chance that either of them missed, and or Swampert could have crit on that first turn. Uh, so, the flinches are the main thing here. The rest of it's kind of a wash. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, the rest of it's kind of a wash. And really close match. Uh, our Gandhi is going to end up making it to finals, which means the Pokey Pyramid finals 
are myself versus Gandhi. Which means the LGL took down the Pokey Pyramid Tournament. Give it up for the Little Goose League. The two Little Goose League, uh, active Little Goose League participants, uh, have gotten first and second in some configuration, uh, in Pokey Pyramid. So, uh, yeah, suck it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, and that's it. Go away.